Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1192. Hey, if you want to download this workbook 1191 to 1194, click on the link below the video. Now, on our last video, 1191, we had bad observations and we needed to look up the temperature and bring it back to match it in this table. Uh, and we did straight approximate match, but we want to look in 1192, the same example, but we have a different situation. We first off have the date and time separated into two columns. So when we look up a date time, we're going to have to join these together. And these columns down here are separated. And in our lookup formula, we're going to have to join them. But here's the real tricky part. If we're looking up 21 hours and four minutes, straight approximate match lookup will race through, find the first one that's bigger, which is 21 and five minutes and jump back. That means it will return the temperature 12 to this cell right here. And that's not what we want. We want to be able to look up the exact date and time and find the closest one. So if we're looking at 2104, it's not closer to 2100. It's closer to 2105. Now, the solution to this will be dependent on the fact that hey, we have exact increments in this table of five minutes. Now, let's just see how we're going to do that. What we're going to do is take the actual date and time, join them together, but then we're going to round each date time to the nearest five minutes. And we're not going to use the straight round function, because that follows the normal rule where we give it a position and it rounds to that position. We're going to use M round. M round will allow us to round to a given multiple. Now the number, remember, we need to join date and time. So I'm simply going to take the date and add the time. Now, if you're new to Excel and number formatting, this may seem completely crazy. If I highlight this in F9, it's going to reveal that dates are really serial numbers, the number of days since December 31st, 1899. So that's 42,117 days since December 31st, 1899. And time is a decimal, the proportion of one 24-hour day. So when you join them together, you use Control-Z, the plus symbol, because there are two numbers. Excel recognizes that whole number and decimal as a date time. Now we can round it. Now we could say 5 minutes divided by how many minutes there are in a day. And that gives me the proportion of one 24-hour day, which is the serial number or the decimal that represents time. But guess what? That I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to actually go straight to something that M round understands perfectly, 00, 0 colon 0, 05. If we give it that in double quotes, it'll know to round to the nearest five minutes. Hour, 0, minutes, 5. Close parentheses. You've got to be kidding me. Control, Enter, and copy it down. Now, let me expand the column. Control, 1 to open up format cells, number, and let's go down to custom. And here's a cool trick. Custom, M, M, that gives me the month, slash D, D, that gives me the day. And you can watch this number formatting start to appear up here. Slash, Y, 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 that gives me the year, comma, space. Hour, hour, colon, minute, minute. That's the custom number format to show the date and the time. Click OK. Because those whole numbers and decimals are hard to understand. In fact, that's why they have a number formatting. Sure enough, look at that. It's totally rounding to the nearest five minutes. Now we can leave that here, and I'm actually going to build the rest of the formula here. And later, we're actually going to go uh, take that formula element and put it back in there. But let's just think about this. If we did, like in the last video, VLOOKUP and look this up, comma, and whoa, wait, wait a second, I can't add the table here because these two columns are separate, and we have a date time. So watch this. I'm going to click Escape. Now we're actually going to join these two, adding the two whole columns together. But that will make it an array operation in our formula. And VLOOKUP wouldn't understand that either. But watch this. We're going way back in time, the original lookup function from VisiCalc. 
And what's so amazing about the lookup function is that this lookup vector will allow us to add these two columns, making an array operation. VLOOKUP couldn't do that. And this argument can handle it perfectly. Not only that, but it's a separate lookup vector, which will search for the time and find the relative position. And comma, lookup lets us have a completely separate result vector, which contain the values we want to go and get and bring back to the cell. Backspace, backspace. So we're going to look this up, comma, lookup vector, click in the top cell for date, control shift down arrow to send it all the way down. F4 to lock it, because we're going to copy this formula down, and that needs to be locked down. Plus, now I'm going to add another column, Control Shift down on F4. And what makes this an array operation is not only are we actually doing an operation not on single cells, but two exact columns, but watch this. When I click on the result vector and hit the F9 key, which is the Evaluate key, an array operation spits out an array of answers. And no way, you can see there's the date serial number, and there is the decimal, the proportion of 124 hour day for each one of those. Now, if you know array syntax, and it's hard to see up here, but if you look up here, curly brackets open the array, and then that semicolon means go down a row. The next number, semicolon down a row. So you see, we took two columns and made one. Control Z. Now look up can find this date time within here. That lookup vector will report the relative position to lookup, comma, and then it can find using that relative position the value it wants to return to the cell in the result vector. So I click on the top cell, Control Shift Down Arrow F4, and you gotta be kidding me, that is amazing. Lookup came to our rescue not only because we had a separate lookup vector and result vector, but we are doing this array operation, which VLOOKUP is never going to handle. Control Enter, double click and send it down. Now we're going to run into a problem, and the source of the problem is going to be when we have original times that are exactly halfway between. So this 21, 2 and a half, it's exactly between 21 and 21.05, and this 21, 17 and a half, 30 seconds, is right in between. 2015 and 2020. Now, here's our actual rounded values. The problem is going to come from, oh, we've used M round to alter the original time. And down here, these times have not been altered. Now, the problem is going to come from the decimal underneath. If I apply general number format with Control Shift tilde, we see however many decimals there is, but there's actually 15 decimals. Control Z, and when we used M round, we messed with it a little bit. Now let's just look at this. This seven, the two and a half minutes, right? That's 2105. So boom, it finds the seven and brings it back. This 2104, oh, that gets rounded to 2105. So it races through here, finds the seven, boom. But what about the 17 and a half? It gets rounded to 2120. Oh, wait a second, we got an 11. 2120 is nine. All it is is that these values haven't been rounded. The lookup values have. So here's how we're going to fix it. F2, and we're going to, since that value right there has been M rounded, we're going to M round our whole column. So M round. There's the whole number. That's an array operation, but we can M round all of those, comma. And I'm watching my screen tip here, the multiple double quote, 00, zero colon, zero 05, end double quote. And watch this. Before I put my close parentheses, watch. Watch the screen tip right there. Close parentheses. So I jump back. Sometimes when you're putting functions inside a function, it gets pretty tricky. But watch this. I'm going to click on the result vector and check it out. And sure enough, that whole thing sitting there, that will work. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. And that fixes the problem. All right. now. This E4 right here, if we didn't want this extra column here, which we probably don't, we'll notice that's just a formula, right? So I'm going to come back to the original cell, that E2, just a formula there. I can copy this in edit mode, Control-C, Escape. Come over here, F2, 
double click or click on the screen tip there. Now I'm going to Control V. And sure enough, that lookup value is that whole M round. The lookup vector is our new invented column. And our result vector, those are all the values we want to go and get. Now I can Control Enter, double click and send it down. And sure enough, now in each cell, it's got our entire formula. If we want to delete this, it's working fine. And I'm going to Control Z and leave that there just as a little trail. All right, we'll see you next video.